everybody, Todd here with another video for you. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take a full walkthrough of my new orchestral template. So it's a new year, and I thought that I would scrap what I previously had and build a new template. So some things to note here. Uh, at first, my template was just a Spitfire only, but uh, that didn't last long. I was missing my Berlin Woodwinds and some of my Cine Sample stuff, so I added those to the template. It's been about six or seven months since I posted one of these videos, the full orchestra walkthrough, you know, my template walkthrough. So we'll probably be doing these every six months or something when I see fit. But so anyways, let's get started. All right, as we can see here, pretty much this is all the same up here. I have my seconds, my chord track, my marker, signature, tempo, video, and I still have my reference tracks in there. Let's open that up so you can see what I have in there. I think this is pretty standard from what I had in there previously, but I have uh, a couple of Alan Silvestri stuff. I got some stuff from Back to the Future. I think I have a John Powell here from How to Train Your Dragon, some John Williams, uh, some Jurassic Park, Princess Leia's theme, uh, some Star Wars stuff, and then another uh, Marty's letter that's from Back to the Future. So as you can tell, I'm pretty much inspired by John Williams, Alan Silvestri, stuff like that. So. Uh, the whole purpose of having reference tracks is not to have your tracks copy those tracks. It's to actually listen to how they sound. So if you want to go for that certain sound, I would pick your favorite tracks that you like from certain scores and then try to mix, uh, add reverbs and stuff like that to get to make sure that you're on the track. You know, with if you want to go for realism and that with your instruments, that's a good reference to do. So anyway. Now, also, something I did new here, as you can see, there's only one piano sketch, sketch track now. I took out the other ones because it just seems like sometimes it just got overwhelming to use. But sometimes what I'll do if I need more, I'll just duplicate this and then change the name. But for right now, I just condensed it uh, to one one track. And that was pretty much my philosophy for this for this year going forward with a template. Let's keep it simple uh, and, you know, uh, you know, let's not make it complicated because uh, having a big template that I had before. Now, as you see, I only have 467 tracks and a lot of that's due is because I went full expression maps for the most part on all my on the tracks in here. Pretty much have expression maps. There's a few that I need to create and, uh, you know, work through. Also, a little side note here. If you go to my website, ToddKEdwards.com, you will find expression maps for some libraries i'm still working on the page so if you go over there right now they might not be up but they will be up soon and all i ask is they'll be available for free all that i ask is is you make a simple donation if you want to uh whatever you want is is fine with me uh just for the hard work because doing expression maps does take a lot of time but like i said they, they are for free um so i'll have those up there i'm going to try to get uh spitfire cine samples and east west up there as soon as i can uh you know for the main ones and then We'll, we'll be I'll be make you know adding more as we go along and the page will evolve so anyway all right now let's go into the woodwind section so what we did here is like I said I started off with Spitfire was the predominantly when I st started the template I was just like I'm gonna go all Spitfire it was going good but one thing like I said when you switch to new libraries it takes a while for you to learn them and you know write with them so I just I've, after a while, I just started getting frustrated, and I was missing my Berlin Woodwinds, and I really love Berlin Woodwinds. So uh, I added them back in the template. And a little new thing that I did, I got a couple new libraries as well, so Orchestral Swarm by Spitfire. I added those in here. They have Woodwinds and Massey, which comes with uh, when you buy the bundle for uh, Symphony Symphonic Series for Spitfire, it comes with it. So I added that in there. And what it is is just, just kind of like a... Uh, an ensemble piece of all woodwinds. So what we got here, we got our our tip, our standard um, piccolo flutes from Spitfire, and then what I did is the ones that were Berlin, I mixed them in there. And here, let me turn these on so you can see they have expression maps on here that I created, um, and then. So I try to keep my track count down. I just want what I want on expression maps. I'm seeing how this approach works. So far, I like it. Um, but like I said, I'm an old school guy. I like having all my articulations into single tracks. So that's just the way how I start it and uh, how I, I kind of just like doing it that way. But I'm trying a whole new way. I want to simplify and make this in easier. And the thing about expression maps is I'm learning even more about them. You can control them with MIDI. It's, it's just crazy. So I'll be having some videos in the future here about that. Um, but I'm still learning. So I got my Octave Runs uh, Berlin. And as you can see, I tried a new thing. Most people put their library first, and then they put the track name. What I'm trying is 
I think I saw this on John Powell's template or something, and I kind of morphed it into my own. And so I just put, you know, the what library it's from, Berlin, SSWs, uh, Spitfire, uh, S Symphony, Windwinds. So it's like that. So I might be customizing it here because that might get a little tedious. Like I might not know what library it is after a while, but I'm pretty sure. So that's a new thing I'm doing uh, and uh, trying out and seeing how it works. But it's a pretty standard, as you can see, like the woodwinds, uh, pretty standard. It's just the, the instruments, and then I have from Berlin, have the scale runs. And then down here, I added from Hollywood, wind, uh, Sunny Samples Hollywood Woodwinds, and I added the 2D section and the runs. And the reason why I'm doing this, um, I try to stay away from ensemble kind of patches and stuff like that, but I'm thinking, I've seen some people use them. And it, it, it might be good for writing, you know, and to, for additional parts, you know, if I need to come up with something really quickly, you know, to have those 2D patches there. Or I can sketch out ideas with it because they're all right there. Um, since I'm still learning how to orchestrate and all that, I, that's why I tend to stay away from them because I want to know how to do it myself and not have and rely on a library to do it for me. You can do that. That's fine. But you'll get more out of it if you learn how to actually orchestrate and create those 2D patches on your own. So anyway, that's just the off the soapbox. <laughs> so we got the run patches here from Hollywood Woodwinds. And so all that's from Hollywood Woodwinds from Cine Samples. So that's pretty much my woodwind sections as of right now. Um, like I said, I, I love Berlin Woodwinds. I think they're the best woodwind libraries out there. And, the, and I don't have the newest update. I just have the, the library before they updated. I know they pushed out a new update recently. And then I, I love Spitfire's Woodwinds as well. But there's just something about the playability of Berlin Woodwinds for me that they work. I don't have any Cine Samples Woodwinds. I know they made an update last year. I might add some in there. Uh, I know on Cine Samples Pro, uh, Woodwinds Pro, they have some additional patches that I might use, um, like some ethnic stuff. And um, so I might add those to the template. But for right now, it's just your standard bread and butter patches. All right, so let's move on to the brass. Um, pretty much the same concept as the woodwinds, the layout. Uh, we got orchestral swarm up here, and then uh, Massey, which I already described. And so I have my horns, and then uh, these are from Spitfire horns. And then mixed in here are Cine samples from Cinebrass Core. So as you can see, I labeled it SB Core. And then if it's Cinebrass Pro, I put C CB Pro, just to, to let me know when I'm using it. So the reason I added... Uh, Cine samples, I just love Cinebrass. I think they're one of the best li libraries out there. The playability, it's so easy for me. Now, I'm just saying for me that they they just lend themselves to playability. And I'm one of those people I have to play out the parts. Um, and that's a good thing to get into instead of, you know, going to your MIDI role and, you know, and programming them in like that. That's, that's fine. It's great. But there's just something about playing it in. That's how you capture some more realism, you know, and try to play it like a real player would, you know, make sure you're using your mod wheel and your expression uh, data as well. So it's good to have a controller on the side. But there we go. So I got my horns, six horns, and then horn solo. Actually, I probably should take these horn solos here and put them with the other horn solos. There we go. So it's a, that's another thing uh, with kind of keeping things straight in your mind. You kind of want to bunch everything together, you know, horns and then, you know, ensemble horns and stuff like that. And kind of as your ways you go down, that's kind of my philosophy behind creating a template like this. So I got my two horns, my six horns. And then obviously if you have Cinebrass Pro, you have the 12 horn ensembles. That's when you're, you're looking for the extra oomph, you know, from your horns. Let's pull out the 12 horn patch, <laughs> and then that should do it for you. And then I got the the descant horn uh, from Cinebrass as well. And that one I just put CB because it's Cinebrass. I didn't know what else to put. Like I said, I'm still kind of playing with the naming conventions. I saw John Powell do something similar to this, and I was like, man, that's a cool little approach. Let's try that and see what we can come up with. So I'm sure it's going to evolve over time, just like all these, you know, your template always does. So then I got to my, uh, you know, tenor trombone solos um, from Spitfire. And then the trombone ensembles, tenor trombone, and bass trombone solos, contrabass, et cetera, et cetera. And then I also added the so a few patches here and there. I saw uh, Christopher C. Uh, I interviewed him on Composer Talk. He used the uh, full ensemble high chords and low chords. I used to use those all the time, but I always felt like I was cheating. But one thing I, I noticed in the way he kind of used them, and I've seen how other people do them, is uh, you know still put your horn parts separate, but then those can just be layers. You can add for layers. Here, I'll show you. So, you know, what you could do is you have your chords and then just play that to thicken up your sound. So that's that's why I added them back in there because I'm going to try that again. 
And then I just have Monster Low Brass uh, from Cinebrass Pro. Um, never know when you need to pull that out. Uh, you know, like you, you just never know. <laughs> you know, it's something. There might be a part that you're writing that normally I don't write, and then hey, let's we need that extra oomph. So I added those back into the template. Um, so yeah, I mean, pretty much my template. I, I'm trying some new things. You know, trying to branch out. You know, not stick to the same thing. And I'm trying not to. You know, stick everything into the template. You know, let's use everything that I know that I use all the time. And it's a good good philosophy to get into because I just found myself uh, being bogged down. Like I have, you know, my template was like over a thousand or 2000 tracks, which I still have that, that template. I call that my full template um, in case I need it for anything. But just stuffing all this stuff in there, I, I just found myself not using it from time, but it's always good to have it, you know? So, I mean, it's just a philosophy thing, but I feel like I'm one of those people I have to have a nice tidy workspace and find things very quickly. Because I'll just, you know, I'll get lost and, oh, let's see what I got today and, you know, get distracted. So that's that's the reason why I did that. So for, I think for my last template video, I didn't have this library. So I got uh, Spitfire Percussion. Uh, so I got a lot of Spitfire libraries um, since the last video I did. And just some other odds and ends. Like I said, I don't really believe in buying libraries all the time. But when you find holes in your writing or things that you're trying to write and the libraries that you have that you've mastered or, you know, know how to use very well are just not cutting it. Then that's when you go out and search for the libraries to, to fill in that hole for you. And that's what I had to do. So I w went and bought Spitfire Percussion. Also, the reason why I bought Spitfire Percussion is, you know, when you're using a lot of Spitfire libraries, they have the big hall sound, and it's, sometimes it's kind of hard to get other libraries to fit well. And it's just good to have different sounds. Like, I have three libraries. You know, I have, like, three different company libraries that I use, and I think that they're the big three for me. I mean, at least for me, in my opinion. You know, it's Cine Samples, Spitfire, and East West. But I really gravitate towards Cine, Cine Samples libraries and I really like uh, East-West libraries as well. There's not a lot of East-West in this template. There's a few here and there, but I might add a few more. And then, of course, Spitfire. I love Spitfire. Always love Spitfire. But sometimes I can't get Spitfire libraries to do what I want them to do, or they don't work within the mix that I have. So that's why I use multiple libraries. So anyway, so here we got some bongos. I got So basically, I have every patch that Spitfire uh, percussion offers in this template. I'm sure I'm going to whittle some of these out over time, but... That's kind of what I do when I get a new library. I put them all in the template and I work with them and I f and then I try to keep track of which ones I use all the time and I save those and then I kind of you know get rid of the ones I'm not to clean things up. So we got the snares, uh, Cineperk, and then I got Cineperk uh, library in here as well. The reason why I went with Cineperk as well is because their Glockenspiel and their and their uh, Celeste sometimes is a little bit more powerful than the Spitfire ones, but sometimes the Spitfire one works better than the cine you know the cine samples one so it's just it's just sometimes you, you find those little incursions you know, those things about these libraries and you know one works better than the other for the kind of composition that you're working on and then i also have hans zimmer percussion not the new update but the previous update i haven't updated it i don't really see the need to update uh because i don't really use it that much and when i need it you know the ones that i have are, are, are pretty good so i got the bucket hits in here and then i have uh, I believe I have the timpani from Hans Zimmer, which I, I really like the timpani from the, the the timpani in the Hans Zimmer uh, library. It's just the HZ01 library. That's what I have. I think now it's like a, they have everything included with that new update, but that that's the one I have. Uh, so then I got my timpani, vibraphone, you know, just the standard percussion stuff. Nothing nothing out there. And then one thing that I added from Labs, which they've changed Labs now, but before they did, I got this. Uh, I think it's Ollie Watton drums. And so it's just a drum kit and it's it actually sounds pretty good. I actually like it. So you just never know when you need a, a, a drum kit. So I just added that in there for right now to get used to it. Uh, I think I think I got it, you know, I donated it and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna pick up some drum drum tracks and I think I got it with their deal. And I put it in there just to just to use sometimes. You just never know when you need a drum kit. So I got that in there. Um, but that's pretty much it for, for all the uh, percussion. It's your standard percussion. I got Cineperk, I got Spitfire percussion, and uh, the Hans Zimmer percussion, the old one before the update. I think that's it. I don't have any East-West in here. And then I have the one Spitfire Labs. And I've incorporated a couple Spitfire Labs in the template because I actually really like them. And we'll get to that. All right, moving on to the harp. 
Uh, so what I got here in the harps is Cine Harps, the new Cine Samples harp. It's called uh, Cine Harp, or Harps with an S. Uh, I used to use the one that they had. It was called Cine Harp, uh, and then they did an update, which I have a video on that, a walkthrough of it. Just take a look on my channel. And so anyway, yeah, I have that in there. I really love that one. And then I have the Spitfire harp. Let me see. Let me open it up here. It is the this one right here. The I can't pronounce it, but it's the normal harp that they have. I really like it. Uh, there's a few patches that work really well for sometimes that I write. But I tend to gravitate towards the Cine Samples one most of the time. But like I said, it's a sound thing. Sometimes the Cine Samples one doesn't work with the track I'm working on, and the Spitfire one does and vice versa. So I got the glissando, the glissando patches here. And then I added some, when I got the, uh, when Spitfire Labs closed, the, they closed it down because they're revamping it. They had a bundle for $10 donation. You got uh, their best labs ones. And these were some of the ones I didn't have previously. So uh, I got this one here, the Charango, the Hammer Dulcler, the Mini Harp and Music Boxes. So I just added those to the template because I've never really used them before. And I was like, hey, you never know when you need a new color or some new you know, kind of instrument instead of a harp or a piano. You know, so I got these in there. Uh, so those are from Spitfire Labs, which they're changing. Um, I think they're going to their new, it's not going to be contact. They're, they, they're creating their own uh, style of a contact thing, like kind of like Ace West did with Play. So Spitfire is kind of getting into that game. And I think all their labs, libraries are going to run on that. So that's kind of cool. So that's pretty much for harp. I mean, there's odds and ends. There's not all harp, but I just put those instruments in there because it's like they're similar to a harp. You know, it's plucked instruments. All right, moving on to our piano section. And uh, so I got a couple of Spitfire labs in here. And as you can see, I haven't named them like I did previously libraries because like I already know where these pianos are from. Uh, so I don't need to do that. Um, and there's not a lot of tracks, so I can figure them out pretty quickly. So, so I got the Spitfire Bedland piano. Uh, this one's actually pretty cool. It's different sound. Sounds more like a honky tonk piano. Uh, so I added that there. I don't really use it as much, but I just put it in there because you just never know when you need that kind of a sound. So I got my Spitfire felt piano, the good old labs version. And um, you know that that right there was worth the money. I love that one. And then, like I said, I, I got I acquired some new libraries over the last couple months. Uh, Oliver Arnold's a Composer Toolkit I got, and he has a felt piano, and I love this piano. So if you love that felt piano, that Labs version, I would definitely suggest you to pick this one up. This one's a little more ambient, um, you know, but it just sounds so good. And what I did, I forgot to mention, the piano sketch, uh, what piano I'm using? I'm using the Oliver Arnold's composer one. I, it just it, it grabbed me so much that I got rid of the old piano that I used to use. I think it was a cinematic studio piano and put that in there because I just get so inspired with this piano. Uh, so I added that in the in the piano sketch track one. Sometimes it it it's too ambient, you know, for the kind of piece I'm writing. But like I said, you can always change it on the fly, but I love it. So I got the so it's the same patch, but they're using different mics. Uh, they have different mic setups for these ones. So this is this one. This one sound that's got a little more of a, a tail and it's kind of a washier reverb on that one, if you could hear that. And then I got the Spitfire Orchestral Grand. And this one, it's very like back in the room because it's it's meant for an actual when you're in an orchestra the piano is not so up front it's you know mixed in with the orchestra so that's why so as you can tell it's like really way back but that's that's the point of this library it's meant to be a piano within you know the orchestra context not solo piano or a featured piano so if you're just looking for Let's say you have like a an action scene and you want to layer piano with the strings going, dun, 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 you know, like, dun, 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 or, you know, doing one of those, dun, 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 and you want to put piano in there, that piano would work, you know, beautifully because you wouldn't be so prominent in the mix, but it would mesh very well with strings or brass or whatever you're doing. So then we got the Unicorda. Um, that, I love this piano too. So they have their version of a felt as well. And I've used this in a few tracks and I actually really like it. But it sounds different than the Spitfire one. It's got more of a cling to it. 
it's not so it sounds more like a yeah I, I don't know it's just got a really unique sound to it so i pulled that thing out in a while so they have the cotton uh part and a little bit more you know ping to it and then they got pure so i tend to use these once in a while i like this one too this is a little more darker so this would be a good, you know, layering or, um, you know, ambient kind of thing. So then I got the uh, Cinematic Studio Piano, the Giant, the Grandeur, Gentleman. And then I got uh, these three here are from East West Platinum Pianos. They have four, but for some reason, one of the pianos is, uh, like, I, I, I'm missing some files or something. I, I got to reinstall it. So, but I, I never use that piano anyway. I forgot which one it is. I usually typically use just these three anyway, so it's not really a big deal. And the reason I have these in here, because these are actually really nice, especially the Steinway. Uh, this piano is really nice, and the the they're actually all nice, let's just say that. But, you know, you just never know when you need that kind of a sound of a piano. But this is, you know. It's got that, just, it's a beautiful sound. That Steinway is it was really good. I think this one here, too, the Bosendorfer 290, uh, is is got a very unique sound here we go very similar but you know so that, that's something i like to use and like it's always good to have a variety of pianos because you never know what kind of style of music you're writing and what piano is going to work for the, for that track so the way i look at you know sample libraries and my philosophy on them like i said always learn the libraries you have master them before you go out and buy new libraries because you got to remember buying libraries is not going to make your music better uh you know don't fall into that trap you know uh the syndrome i mean it's nice to go out and get a new library and sometimes you get inspired and you write a new track that's great but you know you don't want to just blow all your money on all these because that's what they want you to do they want you to buy their greatest and newest latest that's just you know it's marketing it's, it's what they do um but anyway so but the way i i'm kind of approaching sample libraries is kind of like guitar pedals you know like you you know, you need your basic guitar pedals, your bread and butter ones. You know, you need a chorus pedal, you need a distortion pedal, you need a compressor, you need a delay, reverb, you know, and a modulations pedal. That's it. Once you got your basis covered, you know, you should be able to you, you do everything you can with those with those pedals. So I look at that with this, you know, with libraries, orchestral libraries. Buy your bread and butter libraries, the ones that speak to you, the ones that sound good for the music that you want to write. That's how I look at it. So l listen to the sound and the playability and go, okay, like for me, like Spitfire lends really well for me because I'm more ambient, kind of slow, kind of composer. That's the kind of music I write, you know. Uh, so those ones typically work well. And then I love Cinebrass because I love the Hollywood brass sound and I love to write brass parts sometimes. So those ones work well for me. And same with East West uh, Hollywood Orchestra series. Uh, it's th That one sounds very similar to Cine Samples. Um, but anyway, so let's move on to the strings, the best part. Everybody loves strings. And as you see, I don't really have that much. Uh, like I said, expression maps uh, pretty much saved my track count. Um, and that's why I went with it because, I like I said, I still tend to gravitate toward individual articulations that's just the way i started out and i got so used to doing it but there's just something about using expression maps and when i go in i write a part clean up the midi and then just put in the expression map data that i want and it works and it's done and i don't have you know 20 tracks for one <laughs> instrument because i'm telling you i would get lost and after a while it's like you're just sitting here searching and the whole part of a template is to make you compose quickly know where everything's at and you know and write the write the music so what it's this is the strings are similar to the other ones but like i said i got a couple new um string libraries i got orchestral swarm which we already know and then i got symphonic strings evolution so if you're not used to these or have never heard these um i don't see myself using these a lot but I'll, this could be really good for background you know adding some ambience to it so let me just play a chord and what you do is you hold it down and the strings just kind of morph and do their own thing. I'm not doing anything. I'm just holding down a C chord. So they kind of... So as you can see, they kind of build up like that, and then they go, and then they come back down. So they kind of evolve over time, and that's why they're called evolutions, because they are evolving. So I got that... Um, 
you know, to add for background. And you just never know when you need something like that in a queue or something. So that's why I got it. And then Orchestral Swarm is very similar to, to those ones, uh, but they're just a little bit different. Oh, we got the... So I do have expression maps for these. Uh, let's just put something. So I'm just holding down... I'm just holding down a key and it's it's doing that. So the thing about Spitfire and what I think they're going for a lot with these new libraries that they're doing is they're trying to put movement in these libraries. Instead of, you know, instead of just this one note, you're playing one note and it's recorded, it's captured. You know, that's not really, it's great, but like it's not character, it's not personality. And, you know, that's kind of hard to do with the sample to get that feeling. So that I, that so that's the reason I got it because you just never know when you need something like that. So that's why I got that. So then I got a couple other string libraries. Uh, it seems like we buy a lot of string libraries for some reason because strings are very delicate and they have so many articulations and characteristics that you know it's very hard to sample string instruments and to get them to sound like a real string player because they're just so you know detailed orient. Same, I'm a guitar player, so I know like it's so nuanced. You know like. If, if I hit the pick this way or this way or this way, you get totally different sounds. So it's hard to capture that in a string library. So I got solo strings. So they just came out with uh, Spitfire alternative strings. And this one has a similar approach to those evolutions in that you hold down the key and the player and their personality comes out. And that's the whole point of the library. And like it says, alternative solar strings. And that's just what it is. They are alternative. So as you can see, it, you know, it's got the bow and everything. Uh, let's see, let me get a couple more examples here. So it's just, it's kind of, it's just bringing a whole new kind of style and stuff to it. Like I said, I, I just got these uh, when they released them, I think about a month ago uh, as a recording of this video. And I haven't really played with them that much. I'm still learning. I'm still trying to fit them into the kind of music I would write. I've tried a couple of tracks with them, and it went okay. And then I have uh, Spitfire Solo. So they had a deal. I think they still have a deal until uh, till April on these strings. And they sound really nice. You could tell they're dated. But, you know, within a mix, you might not really, you know, it's not really going to come out as much. So I, I picked these up because I don't really have any Spitfire Solo strings. Uh, so that's why I did. I, I picked those up. And then I have Cinus, uh, what are these ones? I think these are Cinematic Studio Strings. Yeah, Cinematic Studio Strings solos. I put these back in the template because uh, I just, I was like, you know what? I haven't used them. I haven't utilized them. And I actually put Cinematic Studio Strings in my template as well. And the reason I did that is because they usually just come with one patch. And then I'm going to create expression maps for them, which I haven't done yet, but I will. And then I have, you know, Basically, so I have more libraries for my strings than I do woodwinds, brass, and percussion. I have, so let's see, we have Spitfire, we have Cinematic Studio Strings, and Cinematic Studio Solo Strings. We have Spitfire Solo Alternative Strings and Solo Strings. And then I have, I think I put in Cine Samples, uh, Cine Strings, and I put in East-West Strings as well. But the East-West ones, they're only one patch. I think I put this in the template, or maybe I didn't. No, here they are, right there. So they're just legato slurs. So these are the east-west ones. And the reason I put these in here is uh, I was watching uh, Curtis Schweitzer. I interviewed him on Composer Talk. Just go look it on my channel. And uh, he uses these. And these are the powerful system ones. And they just sound, they sound really good uh, in a mix, you know obviously just on their own they don't really sound as good but and that's only one mic position and i you know i sometimes i use the close with the mains or the mids just depending on what kind of sound i'm going for but yeah so i added those so i have a lot of different sample library companies for strings because like i said strings are very nuancy and it's sometimes you just don't know what library is going to lend itself good for the track you're trying to write or what you hear in your head uh, articulations wise and so it's just good to have a good good palette so yeah those are all the ones i have in here and so i have the solos mixed in with the ensemble patches as well but i have solos first and then it goes into the ensemble string patches so we got violins one uh, violins two 
uh, second violins and solo violas, stuff like that. The Spitfire solo library, the one I had that had on sale, they don't have a, a solo bass, uh, but that's okay. Um, I have the basses in uh, you know Cinematic Studio strings, I think, or uh, the alternative one has. Uh, but you know, I just use ensemble basses usually if I need to put a bass part down. And then down here, I added some stuff from Albion One. Uh, I love these two patches right here. Uh, these are the low octaves and shorts. And these ones, you just never know when you need a patch like this. Hold on. I gotta get the... Sorry for it being so quiet. My, my MIDI controller's not working. But so, yeah, I have that, and then I have the shorts in here. Sometimes I use those to layer and stuff like that, so I add that. Like I said, I'm trying to pull out little goodies that I've, I've known along the way that I've been doing this and patches that I like, and I just stuff them in the template because you just never know when you're going to go need them. And then I have uh, runs from Cine Samples. So this is their, their run library here. Because you just never know when you need a, 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 a run. I don't typically write runs that much. It's just Cine Strings run. Um, I don't really use them that much because I just think they get – cliche if, if they're because most people don't use them right but i put them in there just in case because you just never know when you need one so that's pretty much it for that for the bread and butter stuff so let's go on to choir my choir is very simple so i got oceana which is a really great choir library it's very simple and easy to use um here, let me pull it up and then i still have voxos I, I love voxos it works for me like i said i'm not a big choir person um, hold on, I gotta pull up the data here. But anyway, like I heard a lot of good things about this library, and I think they had a deal, performance samples, and I just picked it up, and I actually like it. Like I said, I don't write for choir too much, so that's why I don't have a lot of choir libraries because I really don't uh, write for it. And then Voxos, I love Voxos as a cine samples. It works for me for what I need it for. If I need a choir part, I can, you know, I use the phrase builder. It's got a some legato sections and all that. And then right here, I got the Sonoscore uh, lyrical vocal fr phrases, uh, which I have a video of review on. Uh, the people at Sonoscore was kind enough to let me review that. And like I said, it's in my template because it, it it's, a, it's a great library. It's real worth it. Um, very inspiring. Like I said, just watch that video and you can see everything I said about that. So that's my choir. So the choir is pretty much of a letdown. But like I said, I don't really write that kind of music or the epic music all the time. Um, I really don't. I'm not a trailer composer. So at this time, I don't need a lot of choir, choir libraries. And like I said, Oceano and Voxos pretty much covers my my needs. So why go out and buy more? Uh, so then let's go down the synths. So the synths are pretty much the same. And the way my thinking in here, I kind of got this from Daniel James, uh, how he does it. But this is how he does his whole template. But I can't do that um, like he does. So um I have just four empty uh, spots of Omnisphere uh, tracks here. So at any given time, uh, it, you know, if I need an Omnisphere patch, I can just go here, put it, and then find the ch patch and put it in there. So they're just blank, but I got five instances of it in there. And then I'm trying out a new thing. So I have a, uh, a Mini Nova right here, a synthesizer, uh, an actual, you know, real synthesizer. So I have that plugged in, and I'm going to try to utilize it a little bit. I've had it for a while, uh, just never <laughs> utilized it. So I'm like, you know what? To bring more, you know, different characteristics and style into my music, you know, let's give it a shot. Uh, the, the another little side philosophy thing and uh, a kind of what's going on for 2018 and kind of some direction I want to go. I want to start adding some more, like, real instruments into my songs. I play guitar. I don't even use guitar, you know, in my tracks. And someone asked me, like, don't you, you play guitar, right? Don't you put, do you put your guitar in your tracks? I was like, no. And they're like, well, you, you should. And that will make me a little more unique than most people, you know, that, or whoever else plays guitar. They're going to, so, you know, just putting more personality into my tracks. And a thing I'm trying to do is, you know, just put more realism, you know, in there. So I got a section for guitar now. And what I have, I have, this is an amp. So I have a Vox amp. So this is, you know, I can record my amp. And then I have guitar rig which I do like, um, you know, it's, I don't think it's something you could record a whole album with, but if you're just using texture stuff or background, it's kind of in the background, it works perfect for it. You know, you don't have to hook up an amp and you can get all these different sounds. Uh, so I got it in the template. And then right here, this is uh, Spitfire. I think this was Labs and it's called the Peel Guitar. This was in the bundle that I got. And this thing sounds amazing. Sorry, you can't hear it very well. I don't know what's up with my... 
for me, this this guitar will lend itself very well for like ambient tracks. Let's put some reverb on this bad boy, some delay. So, you know, this is just another texture thing. And I, sometimes I find myself, pff, I could just use this to write guitar parts, like clean parts, you know. But I, I really like it. It sounds great. So I added it in the template and, you know, I'm going to utilize it from, you know, occasionally. All right. So now we're moving on to the mis miscellaneous section. So what I got here is just five uh, instances of contact, just kind of like the Omnisphere. Uh, so this is a similar principle. And what I do is like if I need a contact library that I don't have in the temple, it's like I need a riser or just some sample library I'm not using, but I know that I have and I need to put it in the track. Well, I could just go here and put it in there and we're done. And I don't need to add it to the template and stuff like that. So I got that in there. Um, but that's pretty much all my all my template now. Like I said, I, I really condensed it down using expression maps. And like I said, uh, you know, those expression maps, I'm creating them. They will be up on my website. Um, probably not right away. Uh, it takes a while to do these things and then get them up there. And like I said, all I ask for is a small donation uh, for that. And that will be all linked on the website. So let's move on to the uh, mixer here. So my mixer, I'm still working on this. And I've, I've been researching a lot on the best way to to handle this stuff and how to i like to be simple you know and i know people go very hog wild on this um i'm probably doing this wrong i don't know but i know a lot of people like with their strings they have them bust out to high section low section staccatos uh longs you know and they break it out individually like that because when you listen to a staccato patch and you listen to a long patch the reverb tails are completely different it could be recorded in the same room and everything but the the, the reverb tails are different so I'm, you know, my philosophy is I don't really get hung, you know, hung up on all that stuff. I know a lot of people do. Um, like, I feel like if I ever get paid for a job or if I'm doing a job, I'm going to probably hire a mixer to do it. I know if I don't have budget, then I have to do it myself. But it's just one of those things. And it comes down like I'm the composer. I write music. I'm going to let somebody that knows how to mix music do their job because they're going to do it way better than I would ever do it. So, you know, like I said, I'm still playing with this. But what I do is I have them all bust into you know woodwinds brass percussion harp piano you know just how i have it my template it's all bust out to that and then i have going from that they're bust out to the master bus and then i have a reverb for every uh section of the orchestra so let me it's just ql spaces for right now and i'm i changed up my reverb as well i was using i think sam uh, the san francisco hall which had a longer tail on it so i'm going for a little bit more drier than normal i actually really like having wet and very you know long reverb tails like that but for some reason um i just noticed a lot of people were using like so this only has two seconds and it just makes it a little bit tighter and if you listen to a lot of orchestral music you know especially like john williams stuff like that it's very dry uh his stuff is not a lot of reverb the, the newer stuff you know the modern stuff like Hans Zimmer and you know all that stuff that's going on now yeah it's very wet so you know if you're doing a lot of staccato stuff and action music sometimes that that reverb tail kind of can get in the way um, but so I'm, I'm testing this out for, like I said I'm just testing this is all new stuff I'm testing I mean the formatting still kind of the same as my previous templates because uh, that works for me but I'm just trying out new philosophy so what I got on my master bus is my favorite compressor is slate digital um, right here I think this is the um, what is this one called I think it's just the compressor and I always like the red that's my favorite setting so I got it on glue and then on my next one I have uh, yeah from slate as well I have virtual tape machine this is kind of gives a little more digital I don't have anything set here it's just default um, but just gives a little more characteristic to the sound and then I have a transient master this is just a Cubase plugin oh, why isn't this opening oh there it goes there it is. Okay, sorry about that. So Transient Master, and I have more room. And this is built in within Cubase. Um, everything. I don't. This is just what it's set on that setting. For some reason, it it gives it does give a more sound, like a little more room into the mix. I've noticed when I don't have it on. And then I just have your standard L one from Waves. Right there, and then I have it set to L L one F full full reset. Uh, sometimes I play with that, but basically all you need to do is just set this down to like 0.1 or 0.5, and then it won't clip your tracks. It's really good to have a uh, one of those on there. Even if you don't have the, the Waves one, uh, I believe Cubase has one in, you know, a default 
I think it's just in dynamics. Uh, yeah, like a limiter. Just just put a limiter on your bus, on your master bus, and put it at the bottom. So that's it. I mean, that's pretty much all I have for my template here. Um, if you have any questions or want to know anything else, just put it in the comment sections. Uh, I'll try to answer them as best I can. I know on my last couple of videos, people had a lot of questions. And w if it lends itself to a, a live, uh, an actual uh, video, a separate video, I will do that. And if you have a question, another way to reach me is just go to my website, go to uh, up at the top, it says contact, then it says ask Todd. Where's Todd K edwards.com slash ask Todd. And you can ask a question that way. Very simple. There's a form and I will get back to you. And that's about it. So I hope you enjoy this video. Like I said, please hit that like button. And if you're new to this channel, ch check out all the other videos. I have a lot of great videos. If you're a new composer, just getting started on how to set up a template, quick tips, all great stuff on Cubase. Um, and also I do some composer talk interviews with, uh, with composers that aren't famous, that are making a living doing what we're doing. And if you're an aspiring composer and wanna make a living, it's good to check those out. I try to do one every month. But as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for the support, and I'll see you on the next video.